Our lesson today is entitled, The Word Gives Peace, and it's found in the Gospel according to John, chapter 14, verses 15 through 29. This Sunday School lesson for July the 31st, 2022. My name is Tony Miller. And the key verse for our lesson today is found in the 14th verse of the text. And it reads as follows, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever again. The word of God gives peace. So the aim of this lesson is to explore the relationship between God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And be encouraged that Jesus offers us peace in the Holy Spirit and commit to obeying Christ rather than the Prince of Darkness. My YouTube channel, I ask you to hit the subscribe button and that notification bell. You'll get my lessons automatically. Like my lessons, share my lessons. Please, if I give you any value at all, please like my lessons. It does help with the analytics and help with the spreading of this lesson out to as many places as possible. Share my lessons. Leave me comments. All of these things continue to encourage me to share this word of God with you. So this week, each week I do prepare some measure of background that encompasses definitions, terms, theories, people, history, maps, and other places. Uh, we've been in, in, in the book of John for a while, so each lesson is a standalone. So if there's any repetition, it's on purpose that I can't assume that you saw the previous lesson. So let's move on. Amen. So I share with you many times that in the beginning, and let's start this lesson here in the beginning. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, void, and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God. It's framing this lesson in the beginning on this bookend of the lesson. The lesson is about this the Spirit of God that God will provide to this people and move upon the face of the waters. And God said, God's word, Jesus, let there be light. And there was light. And Jesus told his disciples that this Holy Spirit, that, that Spirit of God, the helper, the comforter, was different from himself, would abide or reside with them forever. And the Father would send this helper the spirit of truth after Christ would depart, we'll learn here in our lesson today. And the spirit would speak through the disciples about Jesus. And all these persons mentioned the Father, the Son, and the Spirit are the one triune God, the one God, but in three distinct person uh, personalities, being distinct from each other, but being one in the same, that's our understanding about who this God is. Next slide. Our God is indescribable. There's just not one name to say that he's God, that he's Elohim, that he is Yahweh. He's a good shepherd. He's a word. He's the I am God. He's a truth. He's a ruler. He's a father. He's Abba. He's that Holy Spirit, he's Alpha and Omega, all of these names that are all describing this one God that we serve, that he is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Let's move on to what we'll share along our journey today. And I'll share with you in almost every lesson here in the Gospel according to John. That in the beginning, in John 1.1, 1, 1, it says that in the beginning, before that time when I just shared with you that the Word was there. The Word that spoke in all things that were not became. The Word was with God. And that Word was God. I just shared with you. And in the Greek it says, and God was the Word. The Word was God. Again, framing this lesson that this Word would give this, this peace to his people as he's leaving them the word it's Jesus let's move on in John 14 where we are today it opens up and it talks about Jesus that he being the way that he being the only way to the father the only way to salvation the only way to everlasting life 
that he is the truth. That every word that comes out of his mouth is from the from the mouth of the Father. There's only falsehoods pertaining to anything that he says. That 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 all these things that Jesus said were the truth, and their truth that we can rely upon forever. That he is a life. That our life, that our everlasting life, is is built upon him. That that yeah, we have this life here on earth, and we have an abundant life because of all of the the gifts of the spirit and the and the and the fruits of the spirit that are indwelled with us, with the power that we have to defeat the principalities and powers. That we have this life, an everlasting life, promised because of this Jesus. Let's move on. The time a little bit for some review and let's jump into this lesson amen so i share with you so many times the same narrative i've tried to change it up as well but jesus in the in the gospel according to john is portrayed as the king uh and then uh uh in all the other gospels he's a king or he's a servant but in in, in john he portrays him as a son of god that he's the, the, the Christ is the son of God, he's Jesus, he's the God man, and that's what the difference in, in how God, Jesus is portrayed in these gospels, that he's a king or servant, or no, he's that God man, and that's what we focus on in John, this deity is so important to John that he wants us to understand that. I share with you a few weeks ago this whole narrative story about Lazarus and and Lazarus who showing God's power and joy and showing Jesus glory that that the only glory of the only be begotten of the Father that that he would his friend that he would allow him to die and he would allow him to be in the grave for four days of the showing the power of God and and God would with uh, Jesus would have this interaction with, with one of his sisters and he tells them that he is a resurrection and he's a life and well, the one who believes in me though he were he may even die that whoever lives uh believing in me will never die that, it, that if you if you live and you and you and you die you believing in, in jesus you will have eternal self you have this eternal life and Jesus would raise his ladders from the dead and and he would call him and he called him by name to come out there is an underlying plot to kill Jesus. That's what we learn here in chapter 11. Let's move on. And, 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 and Jesus would call this one Lazarus by name out of the grave. And he would, this man would come out with his hands and his feet wrapped in strips of linen and, and cloth. And Jesus would tell them to unwrap this man because he's no longer dead. And in chapter 12, that Jesus would now again this is his final week on earth and and and, and mary would would anoint his head uh uh with uh with this uh pure nard this expensive oil that she would uh, uh pour on his feet and on and wipe it with her hair and and, and it's when judas iscariot who was one of the disciples who was a little upset though about that she could have sold that money and given it to uh, sold that oil and given it to the poor but you're pouring this all on this jesus dude whatever and then Jesus would ultimately come as a as his king riding on the donkey we shared in chapter 12 and Jesus would predict this hour to the disciples that this hour is coming that 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 that, that his time his mission is all is coming to an end and and then, and then there's this, these these people who's the following the cloud that to be believers and then ultimately they're to be unbelievers but it's hard to they're all fickle and that's what we learn in chapter 12 let's move on Jesus again would be riding into the city again at least in this, uh, on this Palm Sunday and the cross welcomed him into the city waving his palm branches in the air and saying Hosanna, Hosanna, that's what we learned in this chapter, let's move on. And in chapter 13, Jesus is, is, is now again, this is getting into a, a, a more end of this, uh, of his life here on earth. That he would wash the disciples feet he told them that the the hour has come for me to leave this world and go to my father and, and they would have this last supper and he would predict the betrayal of of, of judas and, a, and he would predict the betrayal of, of of peter and he says that he that before the rooster crows you will disown me three times that's what we learned in chapter 13 let's move on to our lesson amen 
there will be this last supper. And there the last supper Jesus will predict and tell Judas the one who dips his cup, his hand in the cup. Again, predicting that. Let's move on. So in chapter 14, it opens up. I like the way it opens up. That Jesus is speaking here and he says, Do not let your heart be troubled. Trust in, in God. Trust also in me. The King James says, Believe in God. Believe also in me. But in my father's or men in my father's house are many rooms, or the King James says mansions. Uh, again, it's uh, just how we you, you frame this. Uh, again, they could have, the mansions are greater than rooms, but again, the the size of this of this new Jerusalem coming down from from heaven is so massive that it's a fourteen hundred mile cube, fourteen hundred miles wide, fourteen hundred miles width and length, and 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 and, and if you would put it in perspective, those rooms or those mansions, there will be 600,000 floors, uh, again, obviously encompassing billions or trillions of people who've ever lived. Uh, and if it were not so, uh, I would have told you, I'm going to prepare this place for you. And if I go on and prepare this place for you, I will come back and I will take you with me that you may also be where I am, that we're going to glory, we're going to be with our Redeemer, our Savior, Jesus. Next slide. So 14, the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to John continues with Jesus' discussion with his disciples in anticipation of his death. And it records a and it, and it records a promised gift of the Holy Spirit. That's what we learn and that's what we focus on along our journey today. And it illustrates the love and patience that Jesus had towards his disciples. Jesus attempts to prepare them for the upcoming events of his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. And he instructs them to continue his work. And he comforts them with the assurance that they would eventually be reunited. That yes, I'm going to leave, but we're going to come. I'm going to reunite with you again that he's coming back. That he's coming back again. That's what he shared with them. So we move on into our lesson of giving you the on ramp to where we're headed today. Amen. This Holy Spirit, the power of God, will be Jesus will leave with us. This promised gift. Let's move on. So background about 13 minutes of background. Let's jump into this lesson. It's a long way to go. Amen. So Sunday school lesson, the word gives peace. Again, in the gospel according to John chapter 14, verses 15 through 29. This week, we'll use the new living as our backdrop. And we will begin our lesson today in verses 15 and 16 of the text. And it says here in verse 15, And if you love me, obey my commandments. And uh, obviously, we know that the greatest of all the commandments is the one that God, that Jesus would leave for us. He says, Go ye therefore into all nations and preach this gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Again, the gospel. The, 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 the great commission that Jesus would do, that he wants us all to, to go into the world and make disciples. We make those disciples, baptize them. And that's the great commission. He says, keep this commandments, verse 16. And I will not ask, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. Another one. I'm, I'm here with you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm this Emmanuel. I'm God with us. I'm God with you. And he says, so I'm, I'm going to send you another God with us. Another God with you who will never leave you this time. Again, that's this, this whole concept that, that this word will give us some measure of peace. This word of God, Jesus, giving us peace that, yes, he has to go. But I'm going to send you another one. Let's move on. Another comforter, like Jesus, another God with us, another Emmanuel. I'm, I'm going to send you, who is this, this paraclete. Is this word that, like in many Greek words, it's hard to translate into English because there's no perfect English equivalent. Basically, this paraclete 
is, is, is one who's called alongside, who is, who is called alongside, the implication of that apparently gives support or help of some kind, and that's what the Holy Spirit is, 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 is here to do, that's in us to do, that is used only by the Apostle John in here in this epistle and, and, and also in John 1. And, and the word paraclete of this Holy Spirit can be translated by helper or counselor or comforter or advocate. That's the power that, 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 that Jesus says will, will come and reside with us, that will, will be alongside with us, that we will do what we do in this life, but this, the power of this Holy Spirit that will be with us, alongside us at first, and ultimately will be in us. That's what Jesus is saying, that yes, I'm leaving, but move on. God will send us a helper, a counselor, a comforter, an advocate who will openly indwell us forever. Move on. So Sunday school lesson, the word gives peace in verse 17 of our text. And again, Jesus is speaking to his disciples here again in this lesson. And he Jesus is speaking to the disciples and he says that he, that Holy Spirit, that one that God will send, that comforter, that advocate that God will send is the Holy Spirit of God who leads unto all truth. And he says that the world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him, right? That all the, the, the evil people are looking for evil and the, and the, the, the people who are self-absorbed are looking at self. They're not looking at God. He says that, that they, they're not looking for me because they don't even reckon. They wouldn't even recognize me if they saw him walking down the street. That's what he's saying here. But he says, but you know him. Again, Jesus speaking to his disciple. Excuse me. Because he lives with you now. That's God with us. That, the, that, this, that this God with us is living with you now, that Jesus, the word made flesh, is living with you now. And, and, and later, the, the, this power of God, this, this God, would ultimately will be in you. We will be filled with that Holy Spirit, that Pentecost, but right now, that, that the world isn't looking for him. That Jesus needed to introduce these disciples to this Holy, to the Holy Spirit of God, the power of God, the power that was there at creation, that was moving on the face of the waters, the truth of God, the very Word of God, the the, the truth of God. That's the power of the Holy Spirit, the power that causes things to happen. We will be filled at Pentecost, but Jesus is telling them that. The world cannot find him because they're not looking for this Holy Spirit, but let's move on. So the power of the Holy Spirit is the power of Almighty God who are the same. It's just they're using this power to, to show man present, that power that was present at creation. creation. That power that caused that flood, and the, that's the power of God. The power at that tower would we cause the, the names to be spread and, and, and the people to be spread. And that was by the power of Almighty God. And at the Exodus, the, the physical manifestation of God became present became localized and present to man, that man could see this power of God, that Shekinah of glory of God, that pillar of fire by night and the cloud by day, that that, that 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 was that power of God present with man in the wilderness in that promised land that will reside in the temple for thousands of years, that the Holy Spirit, Jesus, sent to Mary that the Holy Spirit that, that the, the Holy Spirit that that sent the where God sent that spirit down and and, and found Mary and, and 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 incarnated her womb with the the seed of God and 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 that was by that power of the Holy Spirit that that did that the power of the miracles were that, that, that Jesus would do would be by the power of God that he would speak and nature would obey because this power of the Holy Spirit 
of God. Now the Spirit will be with us. Move on. The Word gives us some peace. And in verses uh, 18 through 21 of our uh, text, Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to leave this world, that, that, that he had to go to the Father, and, and he wanted to comfort and prepare his disciples because his true mission was coming to an end. And, 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 and he would tell these disciples here in verse 18, he says, do not be, uh, I, I will not abandon you like orphans. Say that I'm leaving. Yes, I'm going to leave, but I'm not, I will, but I will come to you. And I'm coming back. I'm leaving, but I'm coming back. Verse 19. And soon the world will no longer see me. That I'm, I'm really going to leave. In verse 3. No, he said it three times. I'm sorry. It says that he said this multiple times that he's going to, to leave them. But you will see me. And since I live in you, you will also live. Again, that, that for three and a half years that he has been in them. That they've seen the power of God. They've seen the miracles. They, they've heard the word of God. They've been a part of this ministry. They've seen the power of the healings. They, they've seen it all. Verse 20. And when I'm raised to life again, that Jesus is telling them that yes, I'm leaving, but there will be a miraculous raised to life and you will know that I am in the Father and you are in me and I am in you. That Jesus had to Give them understanding that there are some things that are still going to happen, but I want you to notice that you'll find that power and you'll find that understanding and you'll get a bit of clarity once I'm, I'm died and raised back to life. Verse 21, and those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. Because they love me, my Father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to each of them who believe and put their hope and trust in him, that Jesus, the hour was coming and he needed them to understand this thing. We magnify something here, clarify something here as well. That Jesus is leaving his disciples soon and he's going to die for mankind. And, and, and Jesus will be resurrected from the dead and Jesus is not leaving them helpless. That's what he's trying to let them know that God still has your back, that, that God also has some gifts for you as well. And he says that he just wanted them to obey and keep those commandments and, and my father will love you and he will send you the spirit. He will send his power. He will send the paraclete, the one who will be inside you, the one will be in you that is for you. That's the plan. God, let's move on. Amen. Verses 22 through 24, the word gives peace. And in verse 22, Jesus is answering the question of this one Judas. And, 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 and Judas, not Judas Iscariot, but the other disciple with that same name. I guess Jesus had a brother named Jude as well. Right? So uh, it's, it's interesting. Uh, said to him, again speaking to Jesus, Lord, why are you going to, why are you going to reveal yourself only to us and not the world at large again to just share with you that the world's not looking for him right in verse 23 jesus replied all who love me will do what i say and my father will love them and we will come and make our home in each of them again he's saying that that all the people love him and all the people that that that, that trust him that that, that, that now that, that God will come and make his home with, with each of those folks who, who believe. But he said, I'm not going to the whole world. I'm going only to those believers in verse 24. And anyone who doesn't love me will not obey me. And remember, my words are not my, are, are, are my, are my, words are not my own. What am I telling you? What I'm telling you is from the Father who sent me. The Father says that that I uh, that know that I'm not for everybody, but the people that I'm for, all of them, I'm gonna put a little piece of me in all of them. I'll make my home 
with all of them. That's the word that God sent Jesus to tell his disciples. Let me magnify a couple points here. That, uh, Romans 10, 8 and 9. For what said it? That the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou would confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and thou shalt believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, that thou shall be saved. That this word, and these blessings that, that Jesus is, is giving on these people and telling that God will, will do is for the believers and not for everybody, it's not for every one, that every is, is for those who would confess and those who would believe that Jesus is the Messiah. One more. Magnification. Amen. And all believers are to be filled with this Holy Spirit. That all of us, he says that that we will come and make our home with each of you. That that a little bit of that Emmanuel, that God with us will be in all believers. Not some, but all will receive the power of the Holy Spirit. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit will be in all believers. The Word of God for the people of God. Amen. The Word gives peace. So Jesus is saying here in verse 25, and I'm telling you these things now while I'm still with you. He said, so before I go, let me tell you guys this. I'm telling you these things now that while I'm with you, in verse 26, but when the Father sends the advocate, my representative, the one that's going to replace me, that is that Holy Spirit. When 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 God will, is sending that other God with us, that other Emmanuel, that when he sends that that other representative, that representative, the Holy Spirit will teach you everything and remind you of everything that I have ever told you. That's what Jesus is trying to tell these disciples. He's trying to, in this narrative, chapter 14, he says that, hey, I'm going. I'm, I'm definitely going to go. But I'm, my father's going to send another one like me, that Holy Spirit. And, and that, that Holy Spirit will will teach you. I might find a couple points here. That the Holy Spirit will teach you. And I don't know about you. I know for me that I, I know I, I, the power of the Holy Spirit is no doubt, and 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 and, and the, the power is is designed that we we come as filthy rags before our holy and righteous God, and and the Holy Spirit is one that cleans us up along our journey in this life, and 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 and, and that's the power of the Holy Spirit that we learn and we study, and and all the things we learn at the moment when we need Him the Holy Spirit will remind you of what God, what Jesus has said, His Word, the Word, the Word of God. One more question for you in this next cell. So I asked a question here. I guess it could be considered a poll question, but I, I would really like for those who would be so bold to put in the chat box below that, do you feel the power of the Holy Spirit at work in your life? And I, I know that I do, and I, and I, I'm, I only can speak for myself, but I, I'm, I just want to know that, if, if you, you, again, I said that sometimes we have to lean into that part of our life that, that, that we feel, we lean into the God side and not the, the world side, that we, we, do we feel the power, do we hear the, the still small voice that's sometimes speaking to us, do we, do we feel the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? Give me a chat, put a word in, say yes or no, let's move on. That word, Jesus, is giving these folks, these disciples, some peace. That's what we are today. And, and Jesus is saying here in, in verse 27 of the text, and it says, I'm, I'm leaving you with a gift that, 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 that uh, yeah, I'm going, and I'm going to go. And I'm gonna, and I told you I'm gonna go to 
to, to leave this earth. I'm gonna, but I'm, and I'm gonna be resurrected. But I'm, but, uh, I'm, but I'm leaving, and, and God is leaving you with a gift. And, and, and because I'm leaving you with this gift, that, that you should have some peace of mind and heart. And the peace that I'm giving you is this gift that the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or be afraid that Jesus is trying to comfort these disciples and saying that, that yeah, I'm going, but, but you're going to get a gift. And the gift that you're going to give, the, the gift is more than just that the power of the, of, the, of the Holy Spirit that will be in you. But I'm going to also give you the gifts related to that power that now resides in you, these gifts. And the Spirit is magnifying that in the next cell. when we make our profession of faith when we, we we make that romans i just share with you that we that we, we we believe who jesus is and 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 now the holy spirit will now will come and reside with us not to everybody in the world but those who are are, are tethered to jesus to god to his word and, and that, that he says that when, when, when that happens, that you will, will receive these gifts of prophecy and faith and exhortation and helps and mercy and miracles and service and teaching and tongues and administration and giving and hospitality and leadership and discernment and knowledge that we get all of these and pastoralship, all of these things and apostles, but, but all these are the gifts that we receive along with that paraclete that comes, that these are the things that we, we get and the Bible says that we get severally as he wills and that this Holy Spirit will give us several of these gifts that you may have one of this one and some of this one but we get them severally as the Holy Spirit wills Let's move on this word Jesus giving peace to his people to the disciples and he says in verse 28 remember what i told you i'm going away again that that but i will come back to you again that's like almost three times in this in this lesson that he's saying that uh, that he said i'm going away i'm going away I'm, I, I, I gotta go trust me i'm going but i'm coming back again but he says here in verse 28 but if you really love me you would be happy that i'm going to the father who is greater than i am so this is the, uh, the last verse of our text, but I want to camp out here on this, who is greater than I am, because I know that probably many of you have heard this, 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 this uh, dilemma or this, this, this thing that, that, that some folks will say, well, well, how could Jesus be God if it says here that the Father who is greater than I am? Jehovah's Witness and, uh, and, uh, and people say that there's no trinity because here is a, the Father is greater than I am. But I will try to untangle that with the next text. Again, Jesus is speaking to his disciples and he's giving them this peace and he's telling them that he's going and he's telling them to be happy for him because he's going back to the Father. Verse 29, the last verse of our text. I've told you these things before they happen. So the when they do happen you will believe that 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 you will remember all of the things that i've told you for the last three and a half years that we've been on this journey that that you remember i told you who i was i told you that that all these things i told you that there's a great commission that you have to need to take the gospel to the other most parts of the world that i told you that you will receive power you told you that the holy spirit will come the holy spirit will be in you that you will have the power to defeat the enemy that that he says that i'm telling you these things that they remind me of these things that i'm coming back but but again that he says that i told you these things before so when they do happen when it does happen you will believe Let's fix this, uh, or let's magnify this uh, issue in verse 28. Amen. So, the, the, the word, the, the, the word of God that was present there at creation, the word that I, I, I share with you, the word is spoken, everything that was not became, that, that a word that is, is part of the, 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 the Father, the, 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 the Spirit, and the, and the, or the, the Creator, the, the intellect, the, 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 
the, the power and the word, all the one triune God. But again, that, 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 that Jesus became a mission for God in order to restore the relationship that God, the man had lost with God. And, 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 he, and he said that, that he would send this one Jesus by the power of Holy Spirit to Mary. And he said that, that, that but we see Jesus who was made a little bit lower than the angels suffering a death, death crown with glory and honor that, that by the grace of God, should taste this death for every man that that was his mission that he he was made a little bit lower than the angels because he was coming to for a mission and this very word of god this very word that was present became flesh and is made as dwelling among us and we have seen that glory of the only begotten the father full of grace and truth and don't let po folks try to poke holes in the, in the, in the scriptures and saying that oh how can he be there but he was there in the beginning and then he was made a little bit lower of the angels that he would be the one who would suffer and taste death for every man i have two more slides or three more two more slides i think to close So they should believe that when these events come, that Jesus would tell them these things, that Jesus would give them this understanding. He would give them all of these events. He would give them this, all of what we've learned here in chapter 14. So when you will remember and believe every word, everything that I've told you, that he says that all of these things here that we've learned today, that all of this narrative that Jesus would have these disciples, Tell them that they would have this power. Tell them that I'm leaving. Tell them I'm coming back. Tell them I'm being resurrected. Remind them all of that they've learned. Leave everything that I told you. Two more cells to close. Amen. Jesus was with his disciples for three and a half years. And he saw the they they, they saw the power and authority that Jesus would speak, peace be still and the nature would Jesus would see his they would see his glory that he would see that power they would see the intellect they see the words that Jesus would leave with them they see how he speak and he and would talk in these parables they would know all these things they they witness every miracle that he performed the feeding the five thousand the feeding the raising of the dead the, the raising of Lazarus the the the, the 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 healings the the leprosy the blindness they would see all the miracles that he performed but, but 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 jesus knew the frailty of these men and, and he knew the frailty of man in general that man has failed on and on for for now and four thousand years of history that have failed and come short of the glory of god so he know that he went and he's leading and he's leaving them even though he's taught them for three and a half years that he knew that they needed the power they needed a helper to overcome the, the principalities and the powers and the rulers of this dark age, and he know that that that, that all of the the enemies that would, would they would they would they would need that power, and they, and they, and he knew that the frailty of these people, because even as, as Judas, for these three and a half years that, that Judas would betray him, and, and and Peter would deny him, he said three times before the morning, and and and, and, and Thomas would doubt him, and the others, when when Jesus was gone to his crucifixion, they saw what happened, and they would run away, and ultimately they would have to come back and find them, and we, and, 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 but we need that power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and that's what Jesus was trying to, to understand, that, that we know that even us, as the frail human beings that we are, that we're frail, we need the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and thus God gave this Holy Spirit to every believer, every believer, not the world, but every believer. We have the power and authority. We have the ability to, 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 to lay hands, the healing. We have the, the hand, the, the speak and prophecy. We have spell, the exhort. The, we have the ability and power, every believer. He gave us these gifts that I share with you, the gifts of the Spirit that we need to be victorious in this life. And this Holy Spirit what gives us peace because we know that, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. We know that we have no eternal resting place. We know that when we die, that we'll be in glory with Jesus, that he's gone to prepare a house for us. That, that, that this peace that we have because of the power of the Holy Spirit that now resides in us, it's this peace that surpasses all understanding. And that's what Jesus is trying to give his disciples some measure of peace and he's giving to us as well. We have the power to defeat of enemy, that we have the power for everlasting life. 
we are we have this all this life we have because we're in Christ one more cell to close and then ask you another question again do you feel the power of the Holy Spirit at work in your life do you know what are your spiritual gifts right and do you have peace again only you can answer these questions but I want to share with you the one thing that's so much and that, that if anything else you don't get out of the lesson that that you know that the power of God resides in you the power that we are more than conquerors because of his power this Holy Spirit that now resides in us that we, we we're more than conquerors than, than anything that we can ask the Father we can do that we are more than conquerors because of the power of God that resides in us and that is our Sunday school lesson for this week and my prayer that something you've learned this week strengthen your faith the Lord provides all your needs you learn something worthy of sharing that is our Sunday school lesson we pray in the matchless name of Jesus, who is our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray and ask these things always. Amen. Thanks so much for your time.